you're going to have to be more competitive with the price. Um, and I know you didn't, you don't want to hear that, but that's just the truth. With something like 550 videos all about wholesaling and flipping here on my channel as of this recording, my goal is to show you the good, the bad, and the ugly about this business. Now, I hope you appreciate that. So on this video, I wanna share with you how I got so close to landing a killer wholesale deal, but then lost it. Now, this is the stuff nobody shows you, so get ready to look over my shoulder and watch me lose an awesome deal coming up. This video is brought to you by Free Comps, a free software that gives you the value of any house in seconds. Get your free copy now at compmydeal.com. If you're new here to this channel, I'm Jerry Norton with FlippyMastery.com, and this channel is all the ways to help you make money wholesaling and flipping real estate so you can live your dream life. Be sure to subscribe and turn on the bell notifications so you don't miss new videos. Now, I can't tell you how discouraging it was to have just barely missed this deal. I was so close and it would have been a 20 to $25,000 wholesale deal, but I missed it. And you know what they say? Close only counts with horseshoes and hand grenades, but not wholesaling. And the reason why I thought I'd share this case study with you is because the reality of this business is often you strike out a lot more than you get on base. And nobody shows you wholesaling like this. And be sure to stay to the end of this video because something really cool came out of it, even though I missed the deal. So here's what happened. In one of the markets I farmed for deals, a distressed on-market listing came out for sale for 50,000. Now instantly I knew this was a hot deal that was priced way below its current as is value because I know that market really well. And after about two minutes looking at comps, I confirmed that the current as is value was 70 to 75,000. That means if I could get this deal for full asking price of 50,000, I could immediately wholesale this deal for 20 to 25,000 more. And by the way, I developed a really cool software tool that instantly finds all of the distressed underpriced homes in any zip code for you. Now I'll give that to you for free so you can find hot deals just like this one. Just go to mydatacruncher.com to get an unrestricted free login. So within five minutes of this property coming out for sale, I followed my double dip technique where I went directly to the listing agent unrepresented and let her write the offer for me so that she gets both sides of the commission. That way she's super motivated to get the deal done for me. Now if my double dip technique doesn't make sense to you or you want an in-depth breakdown of how to do it, including all of the scripts for free, I'll put a video link in the description below where I explain it step by step. So I made a full price all cash offer to the agent and I told her, you have to get this deal locked up right now. I'm telling you, if you don't, you're gonna get multiple offers and it's gonna go way over asking price. Now, even while we were talking, buyer's agents were setting up showings and she was totally on board. She wrote up the offer, she sent it to me to sign, and she presented it to the seller within an hour of going active. Now keep in mind, I have not even seen this property. I included a 10 day inspection clause in my offer, so I'm not worried about that. I don't even go look at properties personally, and I don't have time to send someone there either, and I usually don't send someone until after I get the contract anyways. I'll worry about that later. Right now, I have to get this property locked up. And here's where things did not go in my favor. The property is probate, and if you don't know what probate is, I did a video where I explained what that is and how to find awesome probate deals. I'll put a link to that in the description below so you can check it out later. But with this deal, the problem was the heirs to the estate hired an attorney to assist them through the probate process, which is fine. However, rather than just taking my full price cash offer for 50,000, instead they sent it to the lawyer to review it. Now take a listen to the call I had with the agent a few minutes after our offer was presented to the seller. Attorney, and I said, why? And she said, well, I've paid him for review, so I want him to review it. And I said, well, can he review it after the fact? And she's like, no. <laughs> can she put a contingency, like pending review or something? Um, I'd have to retype that damn thing, but um, let me call her back. I just know what's gonna happen. You're gonna, you're gonna have to present her higher offers. I know, I know, I know exactly what's gonna happen because the, the showings are coming in. So yeah. Furious. Okay, let me. Um, Put a contingency on there, like I don't know, forty-eight hours for review. But it's a simple contract. They're like, what? Is, what? Are, I can't think I of anything in attorneys. It's a, it's a, it's a state-approved contract. You know, like what's on there? Okay, so let me. I'll let you know. Okay, thank you. All right, bye. Bye. So the sellers wanted their attorney to review our offer, but again. 
we don't have time to screw around with a lawyer milking the clock for billable hours. As you saw, I suggested a contingency for review. In other words, accept our offer, take it off the market, cancel showings, and then the lawyer can look over the contract and if they have any issues, we can address them at that time. Unfortunately, they did not accept that. And so the rest of the day was wasted. And the following morning, I got back on the phone with the agent. Take a listen. What's the word? So the word is that the attorney reviewed your offer this morning and said it's expired. Uh, rewrite it. Whatever you got to do to justify your, you got to justify your $500 or whatever. So, um, <laughs> But I've, I've gotten, they're just coming, they're flooding in. So if you want to rewrite it, of course, you're going to have to be more competitive with the price. Um, and I know you didn't, you don't want to hear that, but that's just the truth. Uh -huh. Did you, did you go look at you? You sent your guy to look at it, didn't you? No. Oh, well, you have till five o'clock. Do you want to send him to go look at it before you decide? No, I don't need to go. I mean, when you say more competitive, where do I need to be? We're getting close to 60. Oh. Yeah. Yeah, I don't know that that's going to work. Yeah, that's what I knew was going to happen. It always does. Yeah. 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 We were, we were close to getting her to sign that, though, just so you know. I really? I sent it, tried to convince her, just, just get it done, because I knew what kind of punishment I was going to be in for this weekend, and I, I got it for <laughs> sure. I mean, I'm, I'm not even halfway through this 50-person list, so... And there's no like other th other thing that would get it done, like a bigger earnest money. You know, maybe what if I released the earnest money early so you had some cash to like pack no, or nothing? No, I can't. I can't even give it to them anyway. It's an estate, so they can't touch the money anyway. So oh it's yeah. Benefit. Okay, I'm just trying to think of other things I've done that kind of get a seller to take your offer, even though every single offer I've got so far is cash. Yeah. Yeah. Oh. I feel the same way. I cannot wait till five o'clock when these are in and I can just be like, wipe my hands with this. So five o'clock is when it's, that's it? At five o'clock is when I am sending the attorney a package with the offers. So, you know, offer one, offer two, offer three, and, and I'll summarize them for them and, and then they can make a decision. But she will not. In fact, the attorney just called me this morning and he said, don't even send it to her. She's not. She's not making a decision, me, yeah. And I'm going to go through them, and I'm going to make the decision, and then she's going to sign. So well, so going. 5 o'clock would be 2 o'clock my time. Um, you want to just touch base at 2, and I'll, maybe I'll spend some more time on it? I don't know. Maybe I can do better. This thing appraised in this condition for 72. <laughs> yeah, I know. Well, let me crunch some more numbers. If I'm feeling like I can maybe go, go up there near 60, I'll send them over there. Oh, right, we were Jerry, we were close. We almost had it. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Maybe get get back to you at like one or some my time one, which would be well. What time? What would be the latest time I would need to give you a number if we're gonna try to get in the pile? You need to give me a number at least by four thirty, four four o'clock. Well, it gives me a window to kind of figure out what I want to do. All right. All right. Thank you so much for trying. You're welcome. All right. Bye bye. Bye bye. Ah. Oh. So you can see I was pretty disappointed. Not that I lost the deal, that happens all the time. I'm bummed because we should have got this one. So at that point, it's pretty much too late because it's gonna go way over list price. Offers were already coming in and the sellers decided to put it all in the hands of the lawyer and the lawyer decided to not take any offers until 5 p.m. that day, which means now everyone has all day to get their offers in. Now I did go back and sharpen my pencil and I came up on my offer to 57,500, but the agent texted me that night and said, it's way over 60,000. So we swung for the fences and struck out. Now, speaking of baseball, Babe Ruth is arguably the greatest home run hitter of all time when you look at his entire career. From 1920 to 1932, Ruth averaged more than 46 home runs a season. In 1927, Ruth's record-setting season in which he hit 60 home runs was more than most American League teams. But what's interesting and the point I wanna make is that although Babe Ruth hit 714 career home runs, he struck out 1,330 times. Now the year he hit 60 home runs in a single season, he also struck out 89 times. My point is, it's going to happen, and that's part of the game. And here's how I look at it. If you don't step up to the plate and swing, you have a 0% chance of getting a hit, let alone a home run, 
But if you get off the sidelines and you get in the game and you go to bat and you start swinging, it's only a matter of time before you'll hit the ball and the more you swing, the more home runs you'll hit. So if you thought it was helpful to see the losses and not just the wins, leave a comment and say, Jerry, thanks for keeping it real. You are still a flipping genius. And honestly, it wasn't a total loss. It never is. There is a silver lining in this whole experience. Even though we missed this deal, the relationship with the agent is a grand slam because she does 38 probate listings a year and agreed to let us have a swing at them. Take a listen. So you said you specialize in probate and what else? Probate estates and trusts. Okay, and how many of those do you do a year? Last year I did 38 probates and then I closed 15 standards. Okay, so your probates, any of them, how can I get first look at those? Like before you list them? Well, what I do is I have a list of investors that when I get really good listings um, or like investment type properties, I have a list of people that I shoot out to first um, and just kind of let them get like a day or two's head start on them. Yeah. Uh, so I'll before you list them? Yeah, like a day before I list yeah, them. Yeah, that's what I want. If you give me a day or two, I'll send my guy out there. I'll get my number. Will you, will you pre-sell them before going list or do you still put them up? What I do is I write them for the same day that I list. Okay. I don't want it to seem like I'm not. So when a, it goes active and then pending immediately? Yeah, that's right. You know, and most of the time they're still full of crap because there's an estate sale coming too. So, you know, they're always concerned about people coming through and taking things from the estates and. Yeah, no and one I wants just, showings. No one wants showings if you can avoid it, right? Right, especially when the whole family is there. Yeah. Yeah, if you get me if you get me some pics, get me an address, a number, you know, I, I don't mess around, I'll tell you the number, we'll all cash, make it easy for you. You you get both sides, everybody wins. So even though we lost this deal, I believe landing that relationship is gonna result in deals for years to come. That is the power of building relationships in this business. So thanks for joining me on this video. If you haven't yet, be sure to subscribe to my channel. This is the number one channel on YouTube for all things wholesaling and flipping, and I'll see you on the next video.